Hi ladies and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a do-it-yourself budget binder and the first thing that I used was a three ring binder. You could also do this in a spiral notebook and make some adjustments. You could use any type of planner or just a composition notebook, pretty much every, anything that you have at home. So what I did was first get a large piece of cardstock and I just put holes in it so I could use this as my cover. And then these letters were also part of cardstock so I just glued them on just pretty much to make it look pretty. So this is the cover sheet. These are not laminated but I guess you could laminate them if you have a home laminator. I personally do not so they're not laminated. Then the next page that I have in here are the seven baby steps to financial freedom according to Dave Ramsey and he's the one who wrote the book Financial Peace University. It came with a workbook. It's a whole system but these, these are the steps that my husband and I are following. Um, the first thing you're going to do is have $1,000 in an emergency fund and that's going to be separate from your savings. Um, the next step of his is to pay off all your debt with the debt snowball effect. Um, if you want more information about Dave Ramsey and his budgeting system, I'll leave the information in the description bar. So I just have this in here to remind me of what step we're on and what step is going to come next. I also, at the very bottom, have a Bible verse that I really like. It says, Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. And I just have that in here to remind me that if I can't pay for it with cash, then I probably shouldn't be buying it. So then the next step is, for me, just a nice little coloring page. And I find that sometimes around the time of the month that I need to pay bills. Sometimes I worry or have just a little bit of anxiety. So I just like having a blank coloring sheet in here. That way I can color. I've colored other ones and taken them out, but this is just one out of a simple coloring notebook. And I just tore it out. I used scissors just to line up the edges just a little bit, popped holes in it and put it right in here. Then I have another piece of cardstock and I just used a little uh, page flag just so I know that this is the start of another section. And in this section I have a couple examples for you of how you can basically keep track of the bills that you're going to pay for the month. So I'm just going to pop some of these out so you can see them better. Okay, so this is the first one. Um, this is probably my favorite way that I found to keep track of everything that I need to pay for. So across the top, we have all the months of the year. And then on the side, you can write in whatever your bills are. So for example, since this is the month of April, you could put your water bill and your gas cable and then once you get the bill you can go ahead and fill it in and then I have a little paid section so you could put paid on 412 um, if you need to write a check you can write the amount and then I just write the check number so just put a number sign and then 163 so that means that I wrote a check the other way that I write down where I paid it is through my bank's bill pay. So if I have that, then I just have a little notation over here. BP means online bank bill pay. So the cable, 167, and then I just put a BP. So I know that I paid that through my bank instead of going to the cable company's online website. If I do have something that I'm paying through the online website, such as uh, maybe a car payment, then I would just write the amount, and then I would put WS, which means I know that I went to that this company's website to pay that bill. So this is the first little spreadsheet. I just made this in Word. I just created a table and I kept expanding it and dividing it into the correct number of columns and rows that I wanted. So for me, this is probably my favorite way because you have the entire year spread out. Another way that you can do this is you can have one of these for 
when you get paid on the 15th of the month and then one of them when you get paid on the 30th of the month if you get paid twice a month. If you get paid once a month, you're probably gonna need more than one page just depending on the number of bills that you have. But I just like this because that way if you know, I'm being charged a late fee, then I can go back here and find out, well, was my payment really late or is there an error? So this way you're not going through mounds of paperwork and mail trying to figure out when and who got paid. So another way that you can track this is you can do another yearly sheet by this. Um, and what you can do here, it's a little more simple, so you just have your squares, but what you can do is, because there is a blue line right here, and this was also created in Word, um, this can be divided up into maybe if you get paid on the 12th and the 24th, um, if you get paid, you know, the same dates every single month into two separate sections. So you could have gas, water, and mortgage for the first half of the month and then the second half of the month you could have cable electric and your car payment so what you can do in your boxes here since they're not split up again into two more rows is you could write April you could still put your date in or you could just put the 12th since you know that you're already in April and then you can just put a line through it and put the amount same thing if you paid on the 12th and you write a check you can put a number sign and your check number um, so this is something else you obviously don't have to print this in color for me I just wanted it in color so I could differentiate between the first half of the month and the second half of the month and then another way that you could do this is um, if you want to look at everything like this instead of turning the paper sideways so you could just put your month up here and then you have your expense your amount and date paid was it a check or did you pay online and what your balance is so for example for here you could put visa amount and date paid you could put $50 and you paid it on the 12th, and then your balance is $3.62. Then on the bottom, this is just the monthly checklist, and these are things um, that you pay every single month that you wanna make sure that you have money for. For example, you could put groceries here. If you have a homeowner's association fee, you could put that here. Um, I've also used this for people's birthdays, so if I know that there's a birthday coming up, I could put someone's birthday, and then I just put in parentheses what my budget is going to be for that person's gift. You could also put maybe if you're going on vacation the end of the month, or if, you know, if this was November, then you could put Thanksgiving dinner. So these are just extra things that you want to write down and make sure you are budgeting for. All right, so the next section is here, and here is just gonna be a running record of your checking account. And once again, I made this in Word, but uh, on the computer, but you could do it in Excel. You could just use, you know, a simple ruler like this and a blank piece of paper and, you know, draw this in pretty much any way that you want. So this is just a running record. You could also use the checkbook little register that comes with your checks. I don't particularly like that. It's just very cluttered to me and I just like everything laid out. So what you could do here is just put your expense. So you could put groceries, the amount that you went, uh, excuse me, the amount and the date that you went to the grocery store. Uh, $78 and then let's say you have $4,000 in your checking account then you would go ahead and obviously subtract 
$78, which would bring your balance to $4,000. So this is just another way that you could do it. Um, I have added a couple of stickers on every page just to keep me motivated because paying bills really isn't that fun. Um, so, you know, if you just decorate it with colors or stickers or pretty much any way that you want it, it just makes it a little more enjoyable. Um, and then the next sheet is website passwords. This document I did not create. Um, I found it, I want to say on Pinterest or someplace like that, but basically, um, you can just write down anything that you pay online. So for example, if you have a Nordstrom card, you can write Nordstrom, you could write your username, password, um, any other information. For example, you could put when it's due on the 19th. Um, you could also actually put in the website if it's something strange that you aren't going to remember, like something that has numbers in it. Anything like that. Um, and this just makes it helpful because nowadays, I don't know about you guys, but I would say 90% of bills that I pay are all done online and I have so many different passwords and so many different logins. It just makes it easy when this information is right in my budget binder. All right, so now we have a new section because I have another piece of cardstock and a little page flag. So this section is all about savings. Um, once again, this was, you know, just something that I made, added border, stickers, colors, um, and it's pretty much exactly what it says. It's a savings record. So let's see if you did a deposit, you would just write plus 400 and let's say your check, your savings account, um, is just starting off. So maybe you only have $800 in your savings. I think it really helps when you're aiming for a goal with your savings and I'm going to talk about that next but this way you know you can just simply have everything I don't really like to receive bank, bank statements through the mail I prefer just to have it digitally but that way if I have any questions and I can come to this binder and everything is laid out then at the bottom I just have um, you know a blank rectangle that you can write anything you could write your maybe your vacation and how much you're going to need for that when you're going on it. Um, you could write birthdays in here. Maybe you are going to do a short term saving. So you want to save for a car or a down payment on a house. And really it's up to you. I think the most important thing is just to make sure that your binder is easy, easily accessible and it works for you. So if this doesn't work for you, if this is like too neat or, you know, you can always alter your budget binder to whatever you need. All right. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is creating a goal when you are working with your savings account. So this was just something else I made on the computer. Um, so the goal here is to save $5,000. And then I just took one image. These are just jars. And you could put an amount on every single jar. For example, you could start out with 100 and then go to 200. And then you would just keep going all the way down. And then you have a giant jar at the bottom. And this is going to be your big goal. So you can either write the amount on this and maybe the date. Um, this is just one option as an example. Um, I think it's, you know, once again, it's just important for you to make a goal because if you don't have something to work towards, when you're pulling that money out of your checking account to your savings, there's a hundred other little bills that you might have that you could use that money for. Um, and so I just think it's really important to make sure that you do have a savings plan. Another way that you could do this is just to create just another visual. This is just a star. And how many did I put in here? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's five stars. So you know that each star is going to be $1,000. So another thing that you can do is just create an image like this. It doesn't have to be a star, really. It could be anything that you wanted. 
And let's say that you are saving, you know, you're saving up so you hit a thousand. And you can just color this whole ring in. This probably isn't the best example because this is a Sharpie pen, but um, I think you get the idea. You know, just make it. Okay, so this is just one more type of visual you can have for a savings plan. Once again, you can just start filling it in with the date and the amount. And it's basically for the exact same amount, $5,000. And once again, it's just another way that you can keep track. You can put the date or you can use colored pencils, markers, crayons, anything and fill this in. This would also be really great for kids if you want to teach them about savings and about creating a goal. Maybe not make something um, this complicated, you know, based on the age of the child, but it's just a fun way for, you know, us as adults who have to pay the bills and also as kids to help teach them to budget and to save their money. So the next sheet that I have in here is a page for revolving debt, and this is going to be any type of uh, credit card payments. So maybe you have a Dillard's card, maybe you have a Kohl's card, um, another department store is Macy's, and it's pretty self-explanatory. You just write your balance, the date that you made your payment, And then you're gonna write your new balance. And then this column just says zero balance. And if it's not zero, you can put a no. And then of course you can leave some space um, for the next month. You can definitely like tier these depending on how many payments you're gonna have to make to pay it off. But it's just, I think it's important to have it in here. And then you could also put maybe the due date for these things on this side. You could certainly add another column, um, of course, for any of these pages that I'm showing you. And that way it just helps you stay on track. So the next page is just gonna be miscellaneous payments. And these are things maybe that are not monthly. So they wouldn't be, you know, home utilities or car payments or anything like that. They would just be, you know, as it says, just miscellaneous payments. Um, if you have HOA dues that are due maybe, you know, four times a year. Excuse me, then you could put HOA for April. And um, you wouldn't really have a balance for an HOA, but I mean, you get the the gist of it. Um, it just helps you keep track of, you know, like maybe you uh, had to get physical therapy for something, and so you have uh, physical therapy bills. Something that really isn't gonna fit in any other category, but you definitely want to keep track of it, um, especially if you're writing checks, um, you know, just to make sure that you stay on top of due dates to make sure that your credit score is not affected. And let's see, the last page that we have in here is just another coloring sheet. And like I said, this is totally optional. Um, you don't have to go out and buy a coloring book. You could even take, you know, a blank piece of paper. We did this all the time um, in high school back a long time ago but anyways you just take like a marker you could use something you know small like this or something bigger and you just basically scribble all over the paper and then you can take preferably like a colored pencil or a marker and you're just gonna color inside the line so you just pick really any shape and you just start coloring And this is just another, you know, simple DIY way to make, um, you know, an adult coloring book if you don't want to go out and buy them because they are pretty expensive. I mean, the one that I have that has coloring sheets like this in it, I think it was like $10 and $12. Um, it was purchased for me as a gift, so I definitely appreciate it, but they are pretty expensive for a coloring book that you're basically just going to color and throw away. So that's the last sheet in this budget binder. Um, let me know if you have any questions about anything that I went over. The last thing I wanted to show you is just an affordable option. You know, to create this, you're going to need your card stock. You're going to need all the supplies. You're definitely going to need a printer or a notebook or something. But if you just want to keep it really simple, I found this at Michael's, and I believe it was only $4.99. Um, I just wrote the year on here, but it's just basically a little budget 
uh, notebook. And I believe there are 40, yes, there are 40 sheets in here. You don't need a binder. I mean, it, they have holes in here because Michael sells like those tiny little binders that will go, go with this. Um, but I just wanted to show you this as an option. Now, some of the pages I did tear out because I started using this at the beginning of 2017 and decided not to use it. So of course there's, you know, a cute little quote and then it says year budget and then it gives you a, a graph. I thought this was really helpful because basically, you know, you can track what and how you're spending. So it has various different categories and then it has amounts. I don't know if you can see the tiny little amount. So basically every single month you can just go through and say, okay, well we went to dinner Friday night and we spent $55 draw your little line, maybe you go another night and you spend a little more money, and then at the end of the, of the month, you can determine how much money you've spent eating out, groceries, gas, entertainment, um, and then, you know, there's a bunch of categories down here that just say other. So it gives you a nice little graph in the front, and then um, this is for one month budget, income, savings, debt payoff, other, and goals. Um, you can write notes down here. And then on this side, it gives you a bills sheet, which I think is great because it has everything that you need and it's already here, ready to go for you. And there are, I believe, four pages. One, two, three, four. And then it gives you um, another budget graph to go over just everything that you've spent. And like I said, this was only $4.99. And if you use a coupon at Michael's for 20, 30, 40% off, they do, um, offer teacher discounts. You just need to bring like your teacher badge. Sometimes they take like your insurance card if it says what school system you work for. But I just wanted to share this with you because for $4.99, you cannot really beat that price. Um, even if you were to go out and buy a spiral notebook and a ruler and markers and everything else to create it, I mean, Michael's has already pretty much done it for you. So anyways, let me know if you guys have any questions. I know this was, you know, a little bit longer of a video than I really like to film, but hopefully you guys made it through it. Thank you so, so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate you clicking on this video. And if you have any questions, let me know and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.